When you design your steel structure by using limit state method for calculating the moment carrying capacity of the beam, you use plastic section modulus. For example, in IS code you use this formula where ZP is the plastic section modulus or in AISC 360 where you use this formula for finding the plastic moment capacity of the section. Here ZX is the plastic section modulus. Normally you take the value of this plastic section modulus for different beam section from the table given at the end of your code. For example, in IS800 for ISMB550 you use this value as plastic modulus. But do you know the inner meaning of this term or how to calculate them? Well, this video will answer this question. Welcome to my channel. If you are a civil engineer, please subscribe this channel to get videos on analysis, design and construction. Let consider this beam which you are going to design by using limit state method. That means you are going to use this formula or where you are going to use ZV. Before understanding plastic section modulus, you need to know how this load affect your beam. Well, the very first thing which your load do to your beam is it produce a moment like this clear next this moment produce strain at the section of your beam consider this as the cross section of your beam this is any arbitrary shape and due to this moment the strain profile is this from the basic assumption you know that the strain varies linearly if this is the neutral axis here your strain is zero and if this is the topmost fiber here strain is maximum due to this strain a stress profile is also generated within the section Similar to the strain profile, you can see here that at the neutral axis, the stress is zero and at the topmost or bottommost fiber, it is maximum. This is your compressed zone and this is your tensioned zone. Let's say the yield stress of your beam material is sigma y and here the load is very low. That's why the maximum strain is less than the yield strain. And also the maximum stress at the topmost or bottommost fiber of your beam is less than the yield stress. Now increase the load so that the maximum stress and strain value reach to the yield limit. If you further increase the load, in that case what will happen? The strain has already reached to its yield limit and the stress has also reached to its yield limit. Pause the video and think for it. Well, you know, after reaching to the yield point, your strain increases without any increment in your stress. So, when you increase the load beyond yield point, your strain will cross the yield limit. Okay. But what about this increased load or moment? Who will carry this increased load? Here you can see that due to the moment generated by load 2P, this is the stress profile. And you can say this is the resultant stress or the resultant force in compression zone and this is the resultant tensile force in the tension zone. So you can say that this moment or M has been converted into a couple. Okay. Now if more M or more moment is applied, obviously you have to increase the magnitude of this force. But how to increase the magnitude of this force? The force is nothing but the area of the stress block into the area of this section. Okay. Your area is fixed, so you have to increase the area of this stress block. But how the area of the stress block will increase? Well, steel is a plastic material. That's why it can redistribute stress. What does it mean? Well, when the farthest fiber has crossed the ill strain, the stress should also increase. But you have already seen after yield point, there is only increment in strain. There is no increment in stress. That's why the excess stress corresponding to this extra strain is transferred to the fiber which has not yielded yet. In that case, this furthest fiber has already reached to the yield limit. Obviously, for increased strain, the next fiber, let's say this, this fiber has to be yielded also. Similarly, again, this fiber has to be yielded also. So, for the increased load or moment, the stress block looks like this. Here you can see the strain has crossed the yield limit up to this depth. So to cater the extra stress corresponding to this extra strain, we have seen that the area in this zone has been yielded and this triangular distribution has now become a rectangular distribution where each fiber has been yielded. So in the cross section also you can see that in this zone all the material has been plastified or all the material has been yielded. If you further increase the load, the strain will be more and that's why 
the penetration of this yield stress is more. Just compare these two figures. Here you can see the difference. The strain is more, that's why the penetration of the yield stress is also more. If you further increase the load, what will happen? Again, you can see the difference here. The strain has increased to cater the extra stress. The penetration of the yield stress has been increased compared to this previous picture. Here, almost the whole section has been classified. Only this few area has been remaining. Now the question is, what is the limit of this stress? Up to which point we can allow the increment of the stress? Here you can see that after this point, the strain hardening of the material has been started. That means after reaching this strain value, the material or the steel has recovered. That's why if we take strain more than this limit, in that case, the corresponding stress will be more than the ill stress. But in our design, we are interested only up to this ill stress. So obviously, we have to limit our strain up to this epsilon st or you can say the starting of the strain hardening. Let's see what happened when we increase the load in such a level so that the maximum strain reach to the strain hardening starting point. Here you can see the whole section has been plastified with uniform ill stress because the maximum strain at the farthest fiber is now equal to epsilon st which is the starting of your strain hardening portion. As the section is in equilibrium, we can say that the total force in this compressed zone is equal to the total force in this tensioned zone. Now, what is the value of this total compressed force? Obviously, the stress into the cross-sectional area, that is your A1. So, simply sigma y into A1 and similarly, the tension is sigma y into cross-sectional value that is A2. A2 is the area of tensioned zone and A1 is the area of compressed zone. So from that you can see as compression is equal to tension and the stress is in both case sigma y. So cancel out sigma y, you get A1 is equal to A2. Or you can say when the whole section become plastified or at the plastic state of the section, the neutral axis simply divide the section in two equal parts. Okay. So up to this point, you have learned how the load affect your beam. Here you can see that the resultant compressive force is acting at a distance of y1 from the neutral axis where y1 is the centroid of this compressed area and similarly the tensile force is acting at a distance of y2 which is the center of your tensioned area. If we want to calculate the moment produced by this tensile force and the compressive force, let's take moment about the neutral axis. Okay, this is the pivotal point. Now. For compressive load, this is acting at distance y1. So moment generated by this compressive force is nothing but this one. Okay, this is the force and this is the distance. Similarly, for tensile force, this is the distance. So moment about this pivotal point due to this tensile force is nothing but force into the lever. Simplifying this, we can get the moment is sigma y into this one. This moment is plastic moment because this is corresponding to the moment when the whole section has been plastified. You also know that any moment is stress multiplied with the section modular. So if this is plastic moment and stress is ill stress, we can say the modulus is plastic modulus. Previously we have calculated the value of MP. Now you know MP is stress into section modulus. Simply compare these two equations. If you cancel out sigma y and sigma y, you get zp as this one. Now, what is the meaning of this equation? From this equation, you can say plastic section modulus is moment of compressed area plus moment of tension area. This is the area of compressed zone and this is the distance of its center. So you have simply taken the moment of your compressed zone about the pivotal point or the neutral axis. This is same for tensioned area also. Now you have also proved that the neutral axis divide this section into two equal part. So obviously A1 is equal to A2 and that is equal to your A by 2 where A is the total cross sectional area. So now you have got your plastic section modulus in more simplified form. Okay. So let's calculate what is the plastic section modulus for a 
rectangular section. Here A1 is nothing but A2 that is your BD by 2, B is the width and D is the total depth. Y1 is you can calculate it that is T by 4 because this is half that is D by 2 and the centroid is at D by 4. So from that you can calculate it as BD square by 4, a well used formula for our steel design. So if you find this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.